Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. In this episode of Luminar 2018 Tips and Tricks, we're going to take a look at the Curves filter. Now, if you're familiar with Curves in Photoshop or the Tone Curve in Lightroom, the Curves filter in Luminar 2018 is pretty much the same thing. But we're going to talk about how you might apply it as a filter in Luminar to this image here. Now, I'm just going to add it right straight off the bat by clicking on add filters and it's located down here in the professional section so we're just going to click on that and add this curves filter i'm going to close down the filters catalog so we're got a little more room now those of you not familiar with the curves filter or curves in general or the tone curve all it really is it's a plot of the tones of your image tones of gray so how bright something is is plotted somewhere in this curve and how dark something else is is plotted on this curve and the way it works is if you look at it you'll see that there's a histogram in the background the histograms kind of for reference and the way histograms work is the darker tones are on the far left hand side and the brighter tones are plotted on the far right hand side and the more of a specific tone you have the higher the peak will be. So as you look at this, you look at this low point of the peak. I could tell you it's a darker tone because it's towards the left and there's not a lot of pixels that are toned that way because it's relatively low. Whereas over here, it's up higher and that's more of a mid-tone because it's more in the middle of the histogram and there's a lot of those mid-tones in this image because the plot is relatively high. So what you could do with the tone curve is you could make those specific tones brighter or darker. And you do this with the diagonal line. The diagonal line represents the tones with the darkest tone being in the far left-hand corner and the brightest tone in the far upper right-hand corner. And the tones in between just lay between those two points. So this is the darkest shadow in the image. That's the brightest highlight in the image. And the midtones are in the middle. So if you want to make part of the image brighter, you would push this line up because that makes it brighter. If you want to make it darker, you would pull the line down. So very specifically, if I want to go to the midtones, I could put a point right in the middle of this line. And if I want to make the midtones brighter, I'll just push this point I put on there up. And you can see as I put it up, the image is getting brighter. If I pull it down, I'm getting the image darker. And it's making the midtones darker before it makes the shadows or the highlights darker. You could see it's a curve. That's why it's called curves. So it's making, relatively speaking, when I put that point in the middle and pull it down, it's making the midtones, relatively speaking, darker or darker quicker than it's making any of the other tones in the image. So what good is that? What do we use it for? Well, the most common application of curves, curves is to add contrast to your image. And what you'll do is you'll put a specific shape on the line called an S-curve. And to do that, we'll put a point right in the middle. That's kind of an anchor point. So we're anchoring the midtones down. Then we're going to go down here in the lower left-hand part, which are the shadows. And all contrast is, is you're making the darker parts a little darker and the brighter parts a little brighter. And that is, in effect, contrast. So we're going to go to these darker parts, which are in the lower left-hand part of this diagonal line, put a point there, and pull that down a little bit. So we're making the darker parts of the image a little darker. Then we're going to go up to this upper right-hand part of the diagonal line, put a point there. This represents the brighter parts of the image or the highlights. And we're going to push that up. So we're going to make the highlights a little brighter. So we made the highlights a little brighter with this point. We made the shadows a little darker with this point. And we anchored the midtones down with that middle point. And when we did that, we added contrast. There's before and there's after. Now, a lot of people, including me, prefer to add contrast to an image with curves. It seems to do a slightly different effect than if you use a, a typical contrast slider that may be found in any of the associated, associated filters that contain, that contain it. So, 
Personally, I prefer to add contrast with curves by doing this S curve. Now, you could really specifically target specific parts. Let's say I think the clouds are a little too bright. I could go up here where the highlights are, which control these clouds, and I could add some points to anchor down the midtones. Then go up here in the highlights, and I could click up there and pull those down a little bit. So I'm bringing down the brightness of those highlights. And you could see right in here, it's not as bright. So you could target a very specific part of the image using the tone curve. So it's very, very powerful. Now down here we have these three sliders. And you can see there's black, gray, and white. That's shadows, midtones, and highlights. So if I take this highlights one, this white one on the far right, and I move it to the left, I'm making the image brighter. I'm basically just pulling everything brighter, starting with the highlights. Conversely, if I go over to this black dot, which represents the shadows, and I move that to the right, I'm making the shadows darker. I'm really making the whole image darker, but relatively speaking, I'm making the shadows a little darker first before I start making the midtones darker. And then that middle one is the midtones. And if I move it to the right, I'll make the midtones darker. If I move it to the left, I'll make the midtones brighter. And you can see how it affects the curve. It's as though I put a point right in that middle of the curve and I'm moving that point around. So that's an easy way to either affect the highlights, the shadows, or the midtones directly with any of those three sliders. Now across the top, you'll notice that there's these colored circles. We are clicked on white to begin with. That is the RGB channel. That means that when we move anything on this curve, we're affecting all three color channels, red, green, and blue, equally. And we'll get an equal look to the image. Well, you could affect a specific channel individually of the other two. For example, if I click on red, you'll notice that our line turned red. Our histogram changed also. When we were on white, the plot of the histogram was for every pixel in the image. When I click on red, it's only the red pixels getting plotted. And when I move this diagonal line, only the red pixels will be affected. And what you could do, I think the easiest way to keep this in mind, is if you move anything towards this top left-hand corner, you're going to make the red redder. Meaning, if I go down here where shadows are represented in the lower left-hand side, and I click there and I just push it up towards that top left-hand corner, I'm making the shadows redder. And the more I go, it starts to affect the midtones. And if I keep going, it's starting to affect the highlights. Similarly, I could go in the top right-hand corner and I could click on that. Now that represents highlights. And if I move it towards that top left-hand corner, I'll start to make my highlights redder. And the more I go, the more it'll affect midtones. And the more I go, it'll start to affect shadows. Now, the cool thing about these channels is you could add a different color than, let's say, red in this case. What you have to keep in mind is complementary uh, subtractive colors, meaning the complementary subtractive color or the subtractive complementary color of red is cyan. If you want to introduce a little cyan into, the, say, the shadows, I would go down here where there's shadows, and I would move it to this other diagonal corner. The opposite diagonal corner of the top left one is the lower right. So we're going to click on that and move it there. So I'm starting to add cyan to the image. Similarly, I could go up to the highlights, pull that down towards that lower right-hand corner, and we're adding cyan to the highlights first. And the more I go, it starts affecting the midtones as well. Now we go to another channel. Let's reset that, and we'll go to green. And again, if I go to the shadows part of this channel and move it up, I'll add green to the shadows first, then I'll start affecting midtones, and the further I go, I'll start affecting the highlights. Similarly, I could just go to the highlights, move that to left, I'll start adding green to the highlights, the more I go, the more green I'll add to the entire image. Now the subtractive complementary color of green is magenta. So if I move anything towards this lower right-hand corner, I'll introduce magenta in the image. So as I go down, you can see we're adding magenta to the highlights first. And the more I go, the more I add it to other parts of the image. 
I'll go to the lower left, which re represents shadows, and push that over, and you'll see I'm adding magenta to the shadows. Now, I didn't mention, I'm just showing those with the extremes. You could put points in here, and if you want to just, let's say, add a little magenta to the clouds, I could put some anchor points and try to keep them straight. I did not do that. Put some anchor points on there, and I could go up to the highlights, let's say, and I want to add magenta to the highlights. I could click there and pull that down towards that lower left-hand corner, and I'll start to add the magenta to the highlights. So you could just pick a specific part of the image. If I want to add magenta to the midtones, I'll go right in the middle and go towards that lower right-hand corner. We're adding magenta. If I want to add green, I'll go to the upper left-hand corner. So you can see how that works. Now, blue, the subtractive complementary color of blue is yellow. So with the blue clicked, if I go to, let's say, the highlights, the upper right-hand corner, and I move it to the left, I'll be adding blue to the highlights first. And the further I go, the more blue will add to other parts of the image. Conversely, if I go to the lower left, we'll start adding yellow to the image. You can see yellow getting added. And same thing for the shadows. If I go to the right, we'll start adding yellow to the shadows. And upper, we'll start adding yellow to, or I'm sorry, blue to the rest of the image. So that's how you could affect different colors of this uh, image with these different color channels. Now, most often, you're not going to use the color channels on a color image. What you're going to use those on is when you have an image converted to black and white. I'm going to demonstrate that real quick. So I'm going to get rid of curves temporarily. And we're going to add filter. And I'm going to go up to the top. And I'm just going to add a black and white conversion filter. So we converted this to black and white. Then I'm just going to add the curves filter right after it. So I have this curves filter now. And I'll close down the filters catalog. Now, let's, for example, say that I want to add blue to the shadow. So I'm going to click on the blue channel. And I'm going to go to the lower left-hand corner of this uh, diagonal line and push it up. And you can see how the blue is starting to get added to the shadows. I'll go to this upper right-hand corner where the highlights are, and I'm going to pull that down. And we'll start adding some yellow to the highlights. So this is how we most often tone a black and white image, is with the curves panel. We convert it to black and white first. And then we'll move the individual color channels around to get a very uh, kind of unique color or something different. You could imitate cross-processing, which was in the day of film, when you used the wrong chemical to process film. Most commonly, you would shoot print film, but you would use slide film chemicals to process it. And you'd get these kind of unique colors. And you could do that very easily. Uh, get these different effects with curves and really it's a very very powerful filter a lot of people are a little bit intimidated by it because they just don't understand it but really all you need to remember is that w the darker tones in the l are on the lower left the brighter tones are on the upper right and if you push any of the diagonal line up, you're going to make that part of the curve brighter. If you pull it down, you're going to make that part of the curve darker. And if you go to the individual channels, if you want to get that exact color, in this case red, you go to the upper left-hand corner. If you want to get the subtractive complementary color of the color channel you're clicked on, in this case red, you would go to the lower right-hand corner. And in this case, you'll start adding some cyan to the image. So very easy and a very powerful filter and something that you could experiment with and maybe kind of get a look that's all your own. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.